On average, we check our phones 150 times a day. 46% of people in relationships have been fubbed. 22.6% say fubbing caused relationship conflicts. Hello everybody, I'm Dr. Arpita Kumanapalli and I'm glad you're watching this video. In this video, I'll be talking about fubbing. Fubbing is to choose technology, especially your smartphone, over human interaction. It's phone plus snubbing is fubbing. Sadly, it's something we are all seeing around us on a daily basis these days. Research suggests that it negatively impacts relationship satisfaction and overall life satisfaction. Whether you are looking to help yourself or someone you know, let's understand the hazards of fubbing. In this video, we will look into many ways to stop fubbing today so you can return to more normal, satisfying life. What is fubbing? If you look into dictionary, the dictionary definition is snubbing someone in favor of your mobile phone. Another way to define fubbing, to ignore a person or one's surroundings when in a social situation by busying oneself with a phone or other mobile device. Fubbing is the practice of ignoring one's companion or companions in order to pay attention to one's mobile phone or um, any device. So what causes fubbing? Research published in the Journal of Behavior Addiction reveals that factors associated with fubbing behavior include addiction to mobile phone, texting, social media, internet addictions. Another study published in 2018 looked at fubbing behavior among 400 young adults selected randomly from five different colleges in India and produced similar results. Researchers found that most important predictors linked with fubbers were internet addiction, smartphone addiction, fear of missing out, lack of self-control. While fubbing may seem like no big deal and just part of life in a modern world, it's actually something we really should be thinking twice about. Check out this surprising cell phone usage and fubbing statistics. On average, we check our phones 150 times a day. 46% of people in relationships have been fubbed. 22.6% say fubbing caused relationship conflicts. 87% of teens would rather communicate using text messaging rather than face-to-face -face interaction. An average restaurant will see 36 cases of fubbing during an average dinner session. So here are the dangers of fubbing. It's a general relationship killer. Psychology Today recently published an article titled Fubbing, the number one phone habit to drop for better relationships. By far, one of the most negative impacts of fubbing relates to its ability to damage relationship in your life. This includes the ones you have with your family members, friends and co-workers. According to psychologists, ironically, fubbing is meant to connect you presumably uh, with some through social media or texting, but it actually can severely disrupt your present moment in person relationships. Whether you are someone who is commonly fubbing others or you are on the receiving end where there is no doubt about it, it often leads to emotional distress. When two people are physically together, one or both are choosing a phone over human interaction, feelings of disconnection, anger and resentment may crew. Depending on the people involved and how often the fubbing takes place, the damage can be ongoing or even permanent harms marriage. One study found that fubbing's negative impact on relationship satisfaction can degrade life satisfaction and trigger signs of depression. When spouses fub each other, they're more likely to be dissatisfied with their relationship and their lives in general. They're almost more likely to feel depressed. The study also found that people with anxious attachment styles reported higher levels of cell phone conflict than those with less anxious attachment styles. Damages mental health. Overall, the researchers found that fubbing threatened four fundamental human needs. Belongingness, self-esteem, meaningful existence, and control. Fubbing negatively impacts on physical, mental, and social health in youth. The effects of fubbing aren't just impacting adults. We are seeing major repercussions for younger users to navigate from adolescents to young adults has its own unique set of emotional challenges. Fubbing can have 
significant consequences on social health, relationship health and self-flourishing of the young adults. Researchers have also found fobbing to be significantly related to depression and distress. Other dangers of smartphone addiction is loneliness. Loneliness is one of the main dangers of being addicted to the technology like smartphones. While phones are used for communications, it is important to remember that sometimes we need to disconnect in order to really connect with people. Loneliness is an ever-growing problem. In fact, researchers believe it's responsible for more deaths than obesity. In addition to mental and emotional health concerns, we should also consider the physical health concerns linked to cell phones. Even though cell phones are considered to emit low levels of EMFs, some studies suggest brain are, brains are being affected. Clinic researchers found that brain glucose increased during extended exposure. Signs of fobbing. These are signs to know if you are a fobber. Looking at your phone while someone is talking to you. If you are face to face with someone, but you are looking at your phone screen while they are talking, you are fobbing that person. Taking out phone in social settings. Say you are in a social environment with a group of people, but not necessarily involved in a direct conversation. Choosing to look at your cell phone rather than focusing on the conversation takes place that is taking place around you is also typically considered a form of fobbing. Never allowing your phone to be out of your sight. If the thought of letting your phone out of your sight sends shivers down your spine, there is a high risk of you exhibiting fobbing characteristics. Constantly checking a cell phone. If you find yourself impulsively checking your phone, even when you don't have any notifications or you feel compelled to check every five minutes, then there is a strong chance you are a fobber. Using a cell phone or other technology in bed. When it comes to relationships, this is a form of fobbing that can really hurt a relationship. Cell phones are known to interrupt with your sleep quality too. So make sure you're not taking the devices to your bedroom. How to overcome the smartphone addiction? If you're trying to stop fobbing, then it's important to learn how to spend time without your phone. If you're speaking with a loud one, friend or colleague, make it personal rule to not to look at your phone unless it's an emergency. When it comes to social media, try to refrain from mindless scrolling. Schedule a phone-free hour. Relationship experts suggest to sit down together and set out some rules about phone-free time where you basically put your phone away somewhere where you can't hear it for a full hour while you and your partner spend some quality time together. Set up phone-free zones. Try making certain rooms in your house technology-free or at least phone-free zones. The bedroom is a great place to start. Not using technology while eating meals together is another common recommendation to stop addictive behavior related to cell phone use. Setting boundaries like this for yourself and your family can go a long way to improve connections and relationship satisfaction. Center your mind. Stress reducing activities like exercise, prayer and meditation can also help rid addictions to technology which can make you less likely to be a fubber. I hope this information was helpful. Here is a scripture to meditate on. Draw near to God and He will draw near to you. James 4, 8. Thank you so much for watching. If this video was helpful, please share it with your family and friends. I'll see you again in my next video.